Who'd have thought dying infinitely on an alien planet would be so hard? Like, really hard. You can do everything right, but get caught in one unlucky situation in Returnal, and you'll potentially lose hours of progress. However, there are a few tricks we've picked up that can stack the deck in your favor. So here are 20 tips to help you survive the not death loop death loop in Returnal. Make sure to turn on adaptive triggers on your dual sense. A half press on L2 aims down the sights of your weapon, and a full press activates your alt fire. Aiming down sights is crucial when it comes to hitting weak points from a distance, and it's also virtually required for certain abilities like the slug shot for the shotgun. If you're not a fan of, or you're unable to use adaptive triggers, you can change the control scheme to use a different button for alt fire. Go for overloads. Overloads are similar to the active reload system in Gears of War, and are a vital technique to mastering combat in Returnal. Tapping R2 while the recharge indicator is within the overcharge bar not only dramatically improves your reload speed, it can give buffs such as extra speed, protection, or life leech, depending on which artifacts you've picked up. Along those lines, always be aware of how many shots you have left in your weapon. This is especially important when you're using pistols and shotguns, because if you just start recklessly mashing R2, you're going to consistently miss out on overloads and dramatically slow down your ability to clear a room. Get in the habit of counting your shots, so you know when you're going to have to perform an overload. Picking up Sylphium when you've got full life acts like resin, which means it will fill up one of the three slots that are used to increase your max integrity, or health. So if you're at max health, instead of leaving the Sylphium to restore it later, consider rushing to pick it up right away to increase your max. It will give you a better shot of succeeding in the long run, and odds are there's an inert reclaimer, that's the green health bench, that you can use before your next big fight. This may seem obvious, but not taking damage is priority number one in Returnal. So if you're in a bad spot, your focus should always be getting to a safer place before you try taking out enemies. Remember, you can dash through projectiles, not just away from them, and try to always keep your enemies in front of you. This is easier said than done for sure, but use columns and ledges to your advantage. Keep an eye out for statues in the environment with glowing yellow eyes. They do a good job of blending in, but smashing them will drop obelites. There are certain artifacts, like astronauts, that give you an extra life. You will instantly respawn upon death and get to keep all of your weapons and upgrades. You can find some in the wild, and also purchase them at the Fabricator. The Lamiodons in the first biome, those are the bat-snake things, can be a real problem when they surround you. The orange glow means they're about to charge, and those suckers go far. So make sure you're ready to dodge, or shoot them to cancel their attack. According to the databank, they can manipulate space-time, so you know, good luck with that. The Mycomorphs, those are the big fungus plant fellas, teleport to stay close to you, and will even follow you into other rooms. While this initially seems like a major problem, you can use this to divide and conquer if you're being swarmed by other enemies that can't use doors. Run to the nearest room you've already cleared, and take the Mycomorphs out first before returning, I'm sorry, to the enemy room to clear the rest. If a run isn't going well, or you're just not getting the drops you want, don't feel like you have to keep going. You can easily restart the cycle from the pause menu to save yourself some time though it might be worth running around to see if you can grab any extra ether first. Ether carries over between every run, but it has a max cap of 30, so don't hoard it if there's something you want to spend it on, such as reconstructors or clearing malignancies from chests or items. Don't forget about your melee attack after you unlock it. Using your melee attack can one-shot smaller creatures and will often stun tough enemies, exposing their weak point, and sometimes giving you enough time to kill them before they even get their senses back. Likewise, turrets can also be killed with a single melee attack. These should be your main priority in any fight, due to the fact that they're usually positioned in a way that will surround you once a fight gets going. When you enter a room and see beams of green lights, follow them back to the source and destroy the green column. Otherwise, all the enemies in the room will be continuously healed. Anything that synergizes with your adrenaline meter is a top tier artifact. Specifically, adrenaline leech the artifact that gives you damage siphoning based on your adrenaline level is a must-buy if you see it at a fabricator. 
Resinous Shield is another power-up that will be a lifesaver as it keeps your adrenaline up, prevents a ton of damage as long as you can keep finding resins, and allows you to pick up spoiled resins risk-free. Higher level gear isn't always better than what you may already be using. Take into consideration the stats, traits, and your overall comfort level with a certain type of weapon before you swap it. Some folks are really handy with the spit maw, but I find the carbine suits my playstyle much better. There's no hard and fast rule when it comes to parasites and malfunctions. Sometimes they're worth it and can dramatically improve your chances on a run, like increasing max integrity, but oftentimes they're not, and can absolutely ruin you, such as the one that damages you every time you pick up an item. Always consider what you have to gain and lose before you decide to risk opening a corrupted chest or slapping on a dangerous parasite. Farm new weapon traits. Traits are different random properties a gun can possess, and after you unlock them in one run, there's a chance that weapon type will drop with those traits in a future run. If you're in a position where you can part with a good weapon in favor of farming up an unleveled trait on another one, do it! Better weapon traits will dramatically help you in later runs, especially when you're in the last few biomes where weapons can drop with four or five traits at once. And finally, take breaks in between runs. At the risk of sounding like the warning screen before a Wii Fitness game, it may be a bad idea to do too many runs back to back. It is really easy to get frustrated after a few bad runs, and your performance will most likely pay the price. And those are our tips for Returnal. What tricks have you picked up to survive life and death on Atropos? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to check out our full guide over on IGN.com or our Returnal review for our full thoughts on Housemark's trippy sci-fi shooter. For everything else PlayStation, Aliens, and more, you're already in the right place. IGN.